I was in Brooklyn, New York in March and I was meeting with pastors in the city. And the Lord had me speak from a scripture we all know, 2 Chronicles seven fourteen. If my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. My people called by my name, humble themselves, pray. Turn from their sinful ways, I'll hear from heaven. Forgive their sin and heal their land. So I'm, I'm preaching on this, which I thought, Psh, I didn't even want to preach on that because it's like, Psh, everybody knows that. And so I said, hey, pastors, let's pray in the Holy Spirit. So, you know, we're all praying in the Holy Spirit. I'm just praying away. And then all of a sudden, this Greek pastor gets up. He comes up to the pulpit, and he turns to me, and he says, do you know Greek? No, only, you know, what I have studied, you know what I mean? I don't speak Greek. He says, and, and you know, so he says, let me tell you what you were saying to us. Now, this is pastors, ministers, and leaders. You were saying to us by the Spirit of the Lord, repent, walk away from your sins, and be free. This was the Spirit of the Lord speaking to the leaders. So the scripture that says, as the shepherd is, so are the sheep, as the priest is, so are the people. So this is a time in terms of prayer for personal repentance, mm. okay? Um, I pretty much have to repent for something every day. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Um, because I, I don't get it. I can't hardly get away with nothing. Um, so the Holy Spirit will talk to me and I try to keep really short accounts. So if I feel like I've thought something, said something or did something that's sin, I want the Holy Spirit to point that out to me so I can repent like really, really quick. Cause I, I wanna keep heaven open over my life. Okay, um, for me, um, my prayer life is the same whether I'm ministering or not. I fast, short fast, or maybe a long fast, whether I'm ministering or not. Okay? And so I will say this because it fits. I was Some years ago, I was in uh, Monroe, Louisiana, and I was at one of the house of my spiritual sons, and the angel comes to visit me, and he says two things to me. He says, number one, you have to preach repentance. And number two, he said, you have to preach holiness. Wow. See, this is a time for, for each of us individually to bring to Jesus the fruit of repentance and to go beyond positional righteousness, the Lord is my righteousness, I'm the righteousness of God in good, Christ good, Jesus, good. into relational righteousness. Yeah, that's good. Okay? And so after this angel finishes his message, then Jesus appears to me. And I'm gonna tell you what he said to me. He said, quote, I have given you the power and the authority to follow me. Then he said, hmm. if you will follow me, wow. you will become like me in life. If you become like me in life, you will become like me in ministry. Wow. So this is a day, and then he's, he's gone. And when I saw Jesus, he appeared to me as a, like a Middle Eastern man, um, chocolate brown hair falling onto the shoulders, um, mustache, beard, white robe, about six feet tall or so. And so for me and for this time, it's all about me getting to know Jesus and the Father. Wow. And f this is a time where we have to do this now individually. That's right. Because, um, to be honest with you, I have a very good friend of mine who shall remain nameless for this moment. But you can go on to Sid Roth, you can go on to YouTube, and he said, Jesus visited me for five hours. You should go and look. And Jesus comes to him and says, essentially, I'm against lukewarmness. And he said, if a person is lukewarm, I will spit them out of my mouth. And he said, I really meant that. Wow. So what this 
situation is revealing is the lukewarmness of the church. Wow. Jesus said, book of, uh, book of Revelation, chapter three, chapters two and three, I want you hot, I want you cold. So this is a time where I need to be hot for Jesus. I need to burn for Jesus. You know, maybe we might be in situations in in the United States, different states or different cities or even different nations where you're not allowed to uh, congregate because maybe it's illegal, maybe you might get a fine, maybe they've made it the law and you have prosecution and so it's not allowed. So this becomes a time where we engage in the media like podcasts, like TV, and I get the word of the Lord. And here's what I would encourage people. Uh, watch as little bit of the news as possible and spend as much time in the word of the Lord and That's the good. presence of God as possible. That's good. And then where you're in a situation where you can have small group meetings of five or 10 people, I would get together with them and we, we get into the word of the Lord and we have fellowship uh, with each other in the presence of the Lord or in a church service because there, there, there are parts of the nation where you can gather, okay? And, and whenever you, if, if you can do that, do that. So this is a time of prayer and intercession for the United States. Now I have to say this because this is like so, so important. You vote in heaven and you vote on earth. That's good, that's good. Okay? And so the other thing of it is, and this is really, really important, that we, that whether we pray or don't pray determines what happens. I know that there have been these prophecies about Trump is going to win, it's gonna be a landslide election and all of this, but what happens is determined by how we pray. And we need to pray intensely because my view is that this uh, thing with COVID-19 hit from the standpoint of the enemy to delay a move of God because we are in that season right now. And so the very fact that we have to uh, seek the father in Jesus, however that happens in, in the home or in the church or in somebody else's home, we're still going to have a move of God. It may not be like we thought, but God is moving. And in fact, the truth of the matter is such since March, there have been thousands of people who have given their hearts to Jesus. It's true. It's and true. so we're in the midst of a move of God and you just need to find your place and your way of being able to participate.